Welcome to That's Good Broncos, I am Brandon Perna, and a lot has happened this week in Broncos country. I've got team updates, Von Miller's brilliant Madden commercial, and of course the news that Mr. Bullen got screwed, metaphorically, by the Hall of Fame subcommittee after they voted in Jerry Jones and the originator of the concussion cover-up, Paul Tagliabue, instead of Mr. Bullen. That's Good Broncos. Broncos will play the 49ers Saturday night here in Denver, and what we know is that Trevor Simeon will get the start and will play one and a half quarters. Sanchez will get the same amount of playing time, and Coach Kubiak hopes they both get some time with the ones. I, for one, am very excited to see how Simeon performs. The Broncos will be without defensive lineman Vance Walker, who they lost for the season earlier this week with an ACL injury. That happened Monday, and on Wednesday, the Broncos and 49ers held the first practice together, and I almost shit my pants and puked at the same time at the sight of Derek Wolf hobbling off the field. Tests came back negative, and he will play Saturday. Officially, Dr. Tests state he just rolled his ankle. So, from now on, for the rest of the season, whenever a Broncos player avoids serious injury and we discover he only rolled an ankle, I give you permission to roll a joint in celebration. Must be age 21 to roll a joint. I saw Emmanuel Sanders and Chris Harris Jr. get into a fight before the 49ers arrived this week. That was scary as hell too. I felt like a little girl who just wanted to scream at them, stop fighting, you brothers. It was like seeing Jesus and Moses try to beat the shit out of each other, which would make everyone uncomfortable, except the Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists. And of course, atheists. Madden 17 comes out next Tuesday and they are hyping it with the Von Miller promo featuring an original song titled, Start Me. Just start me. Just start me. When I'm on your Madden team. Rushing the passer and tackling dudes are some strings of mine. Build your gang strategy around me cause my rating is 99. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I will start you, Vaughn, but not as QB, because we all remember how that worked out. Let's do this. Stop all plays, just using my body. Knowing Vaughn Miller, I'd be willing to bet he already had all of those clothes in his closet. Try and try, they won't gain no ground. Just start. When I see art like this, I get jealous. I have to be honest. It's like, hey man, 17, if you hired me to direct this commercial, this is exactly what I would have done, but slightly worse. Whoever made this should win the Oscar for best short film of the year. I'd also like to point out that Madden was very generous with the building of Von Miller's bulge. That thing is huge. And I can see John Madden molding Von Miller out of clay in his basement, taking his time, looking at it very carefully and saying, I need some more clay for the bulge. <laughs> because that's how they model characters for video games. John Madden, as rich as he is, is basically a sweatshop employee making to scale models of every player in the NFL every year for the new Madden. So credit to him. Moving on to the Pat Bowen snub. To me, this makes as much sense as Ryan Lochte fabricating a story about being robbed at gunpoint in Rio. Look, we all know Pat Bowen deserves to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a contributor. We also already know his record as an owner is better than Jerry Jones in terms of excellence. Not that that matters. Andrew Mason pointed out on Twitter the only category Jones leads Bowen in is losing seasons. The Broncos under Bolin have more Super Bowl appearances, playoff appearances, division titles, regular season wins, playoff wins, and average wins per season. We also know that Bolin was the chairman of the television committee and is responsible for helping create the NFL network and help mold the NFL into a $13 billion a year industry. But wait, there's more. The Hall of Fame committee also possesses an unfair bias against the Broncos. But what I want to discuss today is why the snub pissed all of us off so much. There was, and still is, tons of outrage on the internet about this. By now, 
As Broncos fans, we should be used to uh, deserving candidates being rejected by the Hall. Terrell Davis, Steve Atwater, Randy Gratishar, and of course, Bubby fucking Brister. We're pissed because the Hall of Fame subcommittee, and this doesn't apply to all of them because I know Sal Palantonio made a strong case for Bolin and Adam Schefter has publicly said this is a disgrace, is a stupid group of men who should be fired, shamed like Cersei Lannister, and forced to watch the entire upcoming season of Rob and China on repeat until they change their ways. I fell in love with you because I know how good you are and how loyal you are. Are you still texting pictures, yes or no? We're pissed because Pat Bolin is fucking dying from Alzheimer's disease. And we thought that along with his undeniable accomplishments, the Hall of Fame committee would have the decency to vote him in while he's still alive so his family could share that moment with him. But instead, they decided it was a good idea to vote in a former commissioner who spearheaded the concussion cover-up scandal and an owner who has done a lot to advance the league, but more recently employed a known unapologetic woman beater in Greg Hardy and also deprived the entire city of Dallas of Viagra for a week when he attempted to get an erection to sleep with this very, very young girl. Hey, Hall of Fame subcommittee, fuck you. Except Sal Palantonio and Adam Schefter and anybody else who stuck up for the Broncos. You guys are cool. I'm just speaking for everyone in Denver, including the media, who due to FCC regulations and journalistic ethics can't say, fuck you, Hall of Fame committee. I can say it because you offer me nothing. It's not like I'm telling the Bikini Body Hall of Fame committee to fuck off. Now that, that's a committee I respect. They've done nothing but show grace, elegance, good decision making, and they're run entirely by women, which I respect the hell out of. Now, I'm not going to deny that Jerry Jones and Paul Tagliabue, despite what I just said about them, don't deserve to be considered for the Hall. The story of the NFL cannot be told without them. I just thought that the people placing the vote would understand the circumstances the Bolin family is dealing with right now. Alzheimer's disease is terrible. My grandpa died because of it, and placing Pat in the hall would mean nothing to him at this point. But it would mean a lot for his family and for the city of Denver. Pat won't understand, but I know his family would, and they could get more from his induction if they were able to share that moment with him in their own way while he was alive. Essentially, what the Hall of Fame committee did was this. They had two trophies and three deserving candidates to receive those trophies. One candidate is sick and dying, and instead of doing the right thing and giving it to him, they gave it to the two healthy, super rich candidates and said to the sick one, uh, maybe you'll get it next year when you're either dead or when your cognitive function has decreased so severely that there's no chance in hell, you'll be able to find even a moment to connect this event with any part of your memory. The shittiest part are the assholes outside of Denver calling Broncos media members and fans whiners because of this. Oh, forgive us for having a goddamn heart. At this point, the only thing left for the Broncos to do is call Mile High Stadium, fuck the Hall of Fame Stadium until Pat gets in. Or they could take the high road and call it like Pat Bolin Field or something for a year. They already denied my request to call it Big Dick Player Stadium, so do whatever whatever you want with it. I personally don't care about awards like this. I don't think about the Hall of Fame frequently, and when I see guys like Brett Favre get inducted, I don't give a shit. Because to me, the last thing a guy like that needs is another award, and a bunch of people telling him how good he is. I'm not saying Favre doesn't deserve it, because he definitely does. but. Why do we care so much about awarding people who have so many more awards than the rest of us? I don't know. The good news is the Hall of Fame induction can't change the great work Pat Boland did as the owner of the Broncos. That's all that matters. His legacy isn't defined by a symbolic bust in Canton, Ohio, a town nobody cares about except one day of the year. This would be different if the Hall of Fame was in Taos, New Mexico. Now that place is fucking majestic. Pat's still one of the best owners in NFL history and he led the way on making positive changes within the Denver community for decades with numerous charitable foundations that I discussed in a previous video. Again, 
This one's for Pat, and his legacy is not in jeopardy anywhere outside the dark cave where the subcommittee makes their selections and holds blood sacrifices with baby animals, and probably is into some weird S&M bondage shit. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Give me a follow on Twitter. Please, you know, we can talk directly on Twitter. It's fun. Uh, if you are into the Broncos, the Nuggets, the Avalanche, the Rockies, you want updates on all of your Denver sports, check out bsndenver.com. So check it out. And always thanks to my friends at the Mile High Report. Uh, another great Broncos blog. Blah, blah. That's how the pros warm up.